Hi, welcome to the Zach of All Trades channel. I'm Zach. Today we are going to be making the heart from the Dishonored series. Back in October of 2012, the original Dishonored game came out revealing to the world the plague-ridden industrial city of Dunwall, helping the main character, Corvo Otano, on his journey with its secrets and ability to locate hidden collectibles was an object simply named the heart. I could use one of those. Let's get started. I began the build by increasing the size and 3D printing the below linked files. The main object we'll be modifying is an anatomically correct heart with an open cylinder added to the center. If you compare the model to the resource pictures we'll be using to make the prop, it is quite different. The heart will, however, make an excellent base to sculpt clay on. After the prints were removed from the bed, they were cleaned off with a flush cutters and a rotary tool. During gameplay, when getting close to collectibles, the heart will suddenly come alive. The sight glass in the center of the heart begins to flicker and glow. The gears that are now illuminated begin to whir and spin faster and faster the closer you are to a located object. Both of these features will be a must when making the heart. I began prototyping how I wanted the gear assembly by using the reference photos and what I knew was going to be practical in the usable space. A gear was applied to the top of a little tiny 3 volt motor salvaged from a battery operated fan. After a hole was drilled in the center and sides of the cylinder, the motor was test fitted. I always imagined that the cavity in the dishonored heart was crudely carved out like with a spoon or something. So the inside of the cylinder was smoothed out with a two part epoxy clay at the base. The clay we'll be using for this whole project is called epoxy sculpt and I like using this clay because, unlike other clays that I've used, it doesn't shrink and crack. While the clay was curing, graphite powder was applied to the gears, and there's two major reasons why I used graphite powder. One is so that the gears wouldn't stick and seize like what silver paint would do to them, and two, we needed to give them that dark metallic color. Three flickering LEDs were pulled out of some old Halloween candles, then soldered to some wires for easy access. Shrink tubing was used as to not encounter any non-accessible short circuits later on. A quick test of some colonial red spray paint was applied to the heart, then dried. I decided that colonial red was definitely the correct base color I was going for. The heart was scuffed up with sandpaper, then given a couple coats of primer to the interior cylinder with some light sanding in between each coat. A couple nice even coats of red were then sprayed on the inside of the heart. After the outside of the heart was cleaned up a bit, it was brought back to the work table for gears and lights. The three LEDs and the motor were installed into the heart cavity with glue. The LEDs were soldered in parallel with the proper resistor, then the gears were reinstalled with a steel rod trimmed down to size. To fill the empty spaces in the heart cavity, several decorative non-moving gears were coated with a metallic silver paint. The gears were set out to dry so that I could figure out what I wanted to do with the sight glass. I had a couple ideas for the sight glass material, but decided that a spare magnifying glass lens was the best option to accentuate all of the added details we put in. Some clay was sculpted around the rim of the cylinder to properly house the sight glass, then painted to match the base coat. The silver painted gears were finally dry, so they were trimmed to size, then glued in place making darn sure that there was enough tolerance in between the spinning gears and the fixed ones so that they could properly move. Here's a quick video showcasing the lights and the assembly working. This thing is turning out pretty cool. Let's work on the sight glass next. I needed the help of a professional to make this look like this. Reintroducing. Cricket Katie. I got to work photoshopping several custom designs so that Cricket Katie could vinyl cut and glass etch the first two stages. The first stage was to create the clear middle portion of the sight glass. Stage two was to add that extra design to the already etched glass. After stage one and stage two, this is the finished product. The outer ring was painted silver for stage three. And stage four was to cover up the entire sight glass so that we could sculpt and paint around it. Epoxy sculpt was used in several stages to shape the heart. I did this in about four or five stages. Shape a little, let it cure. Shape a little, let it, you get the idea. 
Finally, after several days of sculpting and drying, the heart was beginning to take shape. Whisper, whisper, secret, secret. These videos take a very long time to make, so it would mean so much to us if you took a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. The outside of the heart was cleaned up a little bit with sandpaper to smooth out all of the little fingerprints and imperfections. Finally, time for the paint job. Paint has an extremely difficult time sticking to epoxy sculpt in my experience, so the heart got three even coats of gray primer. After the primer fully dried, it was followed up by three coats of colonial red. The now fully dried red heart was brought down to the work table for more custom detail. I started with some washed out white paint and a chip brush, adding a little paint here and there and then wiping it away before it fully dried. I worked my way to darker and darker paint, drying my progress with a hair dryer, making sure that the cracks in the heart were emphasized by the darker colors. When my vision of the heart was complete, it was brought back out to the garage for three coats of glossy clear paint to seal in this paint job. You ready to see something satisfying? Check this out. Removing the vinyl protecting the sight glass. Let's remove it together and see how the glass fared, shall we? It even still works perfectly. This thing is turning out to be way too cool. Let's work on adding some bones next. On the reference pictures that I used, I counted three bones sticking out of the heart's left-hand side. I collected several sticks that were close to the appearance of these three bones, then trimmed and whittled them down at the bench. The sticks were glued up and prepped for paint. Each of the sticks got three coats of portal turret white, while the hardware for the bottom of the prop was given two coats of copper spray paint. While the paint is drying, let's head back down to the shop to finish the wiring. I did the math and added the proper resistor to the motor circuit. I made it so that the lights and the gears were two independent circuits of each other with their respective switches powered by a braided USB cable. Two screws were used to secure the rear cover. And that being said, looks like our bones are dry. That means it's time to add the wires, bones, and hardware to the outside of the heart. The first layer to the hardware is the wires. After I had applied precisely cut steel rods around the sight glass, mechanics wire was carefully wrapped in and around the heart in the pre-made grooves that I made especially for this purpose. Super glue was applied to help tack the wires in place, and you'll probably note that there is a ring that still needs to be applied to the top of the heart. More epoxy sculpt was rolled out on a mat and then wrapped and sculpted to give the appearance of that occlusive ring. While the ring was curing, some leather was pulled out from my storage and cut out to cover the bottom right section that I had allotted for it. The leather was glued in place and then carefully shaped back with an X-Acto knife to fit the space perfectly. Now that the leather is in place, we can insert the lower frontal steel rod, I have no idea what it's actually called, and leather holding hardware that we painted copper. A hole was drilled where I sculpted the upper hardware for the rod. The steel rod was slid into the hole that we just drilled with the copper hardware secured to the bottom. Very carefully, with a small torch, I heated up the 3D printed copper piece to push it against the heart and mold it in the right shape. These bones we made look way too nice. Using yellow, black, and several various mixtures of both paint, several coats were applied to the bones then wiped away slowly, giving them an aged appearance. Hot glue was used to tack them in place and then super glue applied later on for a better hold. The ring we sculpted earlier is now cured and painted brown, then carefully scraped back with a high grit sandpaper. A coat of Mod Podge was brushed over the ring, giving it that protective gloss. After touching up the paint here and there, it was finally ready to show off. Thank you so much for watching. I'm actually looking to upgrade some of my equipment for this channel, so if you're looking for a way of supporting me and seeing me grow as a creator, this Dishonored Heart that you just saw me make is actually for sale via the link below. If you're the one who purchases the heart, 
I would love to see a picture of what you decide to do with it or where you decide to display the heart. I may even include your picture in my next video, so let me know. Uh, also, let me know down in the comments if you have any other cool ideas for me to make. Again, thank you so much for hanging out with me. All right, uh, then until next time, see you later.